Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Tech.com video we're going to be discussing the Xbox 720 supposed specifications in light of the Move engines. Now, I've talked about them a little bit before in previous videos, but I've never actually talked about what they actually do, what their purpose is, and so on. So we're going to be discussing that and explaining that in this particular video. As usual, if you guys want to comment and so on, that would be fantastic. However, generally speaking, I answer far, far quicker on Facebook. So anyway, let's jump in. Now, if I had to summarize the purpose of move engines in a very, very, very simple line, I believe it could be best described as they are intended to increase the speed that the Xbox 720 itself will be accessing data. Now, this of itself doesn't sound that impressive, but the purpose here is to reduce the system's overhead. In other words, so that the system itself doesn't have to rely on it, so the CPU and so on doesn't have to worry about shunting around data as much, and it can basically just relax and reap the benefits. Now... The Durango itself, or Xbox 720, whatever you want to call it, has four of these move engines, and their purpose is for fast um, access to DMA, or direct memory access. Now, Durango's uh, move engines are tied to different hardware components, and we'll get into those in a moment. However, let's discuss exactly how these operate just for a second. So, they are completely what is known as fixed functions. In other words, the algorithm, algorithms, I am sorry if I can get the word out, it's actually embedded directly into the hardware. Now, the purpose of this is that the developers don't need to actually worry about it. Their results, their calculations, and so on, are actually not visible to the actual software. The purpose of this, in theory, is to reduce the workload of the rest of the system, to get better results, to simplify the whole process of shunting large amounts of data around the Durango. Now, Move Engine at Zero is connected to Tile and Slash Untile. Move Engine 1, DMA Slash Tile and Untile again. The second move engine is once again Tile and Untile, but also LZ Decode and JPEG Decode. And the third move, or sorry, the fourth move engine, move engine three, is Tile and Untile and LZ Encode. Now, the actual move engines themselves um, can move data or move data around in the memory in various combinations of. Uh, ways. For example, it can move, move memory for, uh, data from the main RAM to the ES RAM or to, say, vice versa or from a sub-rectangle of a texture. And they can also be used to set areas of memory to a constant value. I'm not going to get too much into that, but it's basically a way to um, pretty much shave off instruction time and so on as it doesn't need to do it for each and every part, it can simply do it for a section. So anyway, this is done on a 256 bits of data um, interface, and it can actually read and write on that uh, per GPU clock cycle. This gives you about 25.6 GB per second both ways, by the way. Now, all move engines are on the same uh, memory path, by the way, uh, but the difference is that they also share it with other components of the GPU, such as the encoding and decoding, command processor, and so forth. But the benefit of this is simply put that they don't really require that much memory bandwidth anyway. I'm talking about, say, video decoding. However, um, According to leaks, the actual throughput of the engines themselves are actually less than if it was using the shaders. For example, um, if we were to talk about ESRAM to ESRAM copying, it can do it at 25.6 gigabytes per second. On the other hand, if it was doing the peak using a shader, it would be 51 gigabytes per second. ESRAM to RAM, 25.6 on the move engines. This is peak, by the way, and you can get 68 gigabytes per second, on the other hand, if you were using the shader. So what's the purpose of the move engine, then, if you, know, you can do the whole same thing, but faster? Well, it's quite simply put that this means that the move engines can be moving data around, 
um, and it operates in parallel with computation. This quite simply means that if, for example, the GPU is completely tied up, in other words, it can't physically process any more data, data to the move engine, the, the move engines rather are still moving that data to the GPU as fast as possible. So the GPU is in tied up by doing even more work. In other words, you could actually say it's a completely free operation. Now the second major function of the move engines is a uh, compression. Now compression is very important with a data flow because quite simply put, uncompressed data requires a lot of space. I'm going to give you guys a pretty bad but very rough example of what I mean by this. Using some uncompressed footage that I recorded of a game at 1080p, you can see that it is 65 megabytes if I compress it into a RAW file. That's a standard RAW, no really decent compression or anything like that, just very basic. On the other hand, uncompressed as an AVI, it's 173 megabytes, exactly the same amount of data is contained within that as in i haven't lost anything it's lost this compression but suffice to say that it's going to be a hell of a lot easier for me to move say a 63 megabyte file or 65 i'm sorry than it is 173 and obviously certain types of compression are a lot better and so on as it turns out on the durango you have four move engines. However, only one of those supports encoding and another one, a separate one, supports decoding. And this is lossless, by the way. I just want to reiterate this. This will be an LZ type of decoding. Now, theoretically, you could actually compress the data that will be staying on the memory itself, um, but won't be used again for a while example would be audio effects, clips, that type of thing, or maybe um, textures or whatever in the future of the level. However, generally speaking, that is not its purpose. Generally speaking, it is from physical means such as, say, hard drives or networks, that type of thing. The purpose is basically to minimize the transfer time once again just to reiterate think of it as if you have a hard drive with data on it then it's a hell of a lot easier to transfer transfer and say say a 60 megabyte file that was originally 100 and say a 100 megabyte file it just simply saves you a bandwidth and obviously these next generation of consoles are going to be very 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 dependent upon the bandwidth but it's worth noting that the same move engine that does the decoding of the LZ compression uh, will also serve to decode JPEGs as well. Now, obviously, JPEGs are typically an image format and is basically a codec in and of itself. For what we understand, there isn't any support for great scale only textures. So it appears that it's only going to be color and there's also no textures with alpha um, channels either. Speaking of which, it also does not support, say, the later JPEG 2000 or the format um, such as JPEG XR, HD photos, and so on. Oddly enough, it doesn't also seem to support Windows Media Photo either. Now, because JPEGs themselves require a lot more decoding, it lowers the maximum throughput. I wouldn't say substantially, but it is much less regardless than the peak amount of raw data that you can be um, sending across. Now, obviously, this depends upon a multi-sampling mode and so on. Now, we're not 100% sure, well, we're not 100% sure of any of these specifications, as it turns out, but most likely the purpose of this will be to handle things such as, say, connect camera streams. Uh, so, in other words, taking images and so forth and then literally encoding them for system purposes. It's worth noting, uh, just as an aside, that the PlayStation 3 often did a lot of this stuff on the SPUs of its cell processor. Um, so you can imagine that that takes a lot of the, the, the strain away from effectively CPU loads in this case. As it turns out, you're looking at a raw data rate of 2 times 1280 by 720, also known as 
720p of course times 2 bytes times 60 hertz so you're looking at a total data rate on that raw by the way of 221 this would be for by 2 by 2 sub sampling incidentally now as i was saying there are four move engines three of those are exclusive for running the game or whatever application is running in uh, well the foreground in other words however move engine zero is a bit different and move engine zero is actually shared between the title so and i would say gears of war 5 or whatever it's going to be and the system itself um, during the, the system's gpu slice in other words, the time that the system itself is going to be using the GPU for its own uh, commands and so forth. The system itself will be using the first move engine, or move engine zero. On the other hand, when the title is getting its time to shine, so to speak, in other words, its time slice, so the GPU's time slice, um, move engine zero will be then used for the title instead. By the way, apparently it can also be used for direct 3D, and this could be used to carry out various commands such as map operations and so forth. Um, and if it does so, it can then move certain applications or certain commands or whatever it's done to the main memory. Anyway, I think that just about does it for this particular video. It's given you a brief overview exactly what the move engines do. I'm going to be covering a little bit more on the Durango architecture over the next couple of days and just kind of clearing up stuff before, of course, the actual system is announced. Who knows? All of these videos could be for naught. In other words, the system specifications could be completely different. It could be using, I don't know, um, a Pentium 1 for all we know for the CPU. We simply are unsure 100%. We can only go with best guess scenarios. However, um, hopefully we have a fair indication by now about what the system is. There are a few things I'd like to see changed on the final draft, including more, for example, more graphical grunt. But once again, just to reiterate, we're not 100% sure yet of the 100% full throughput of this system. Um, and for anyone giving doom and gloom expectations about whether Microsoft have gone the wrong route, in other words, you know, the PlayStation is going to be better, I'd just like to remind you that it is still very, very, very early. The systems have not even been released yet. And I remember when the Xbox 360 and PS3 were first announced, there was an absolute massive war on a couple of forums I used to frequent. I generally don't really hang around forums anymore, by the way. Um, I tend to find they bring out the worst in some people. And I find that quite often it's very, very difficult to get balanced opinions on forums because they tend to be really black and white. In other words not really um, a fair assessment so i've kind of stopped hanging around them that's just my own personal opinion however but i remember the there were massive claims that the cell was going to be revolutionary and other people said that no 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 it's going to be virtually impossible to work upon and of course as the systems matured we actually got to the truth that the cell wasn't exactly weak it was a very good cpu but it wasn't impossible to work upon but the reality was that it wasn't as easy as it should have been as well. And that's generally what happens, I find, with these uh, rumours and speculations. They There's usually a half-truth in there, but no one exactly knows 100%, I'm afraid. Anyway, I think that just about does it. I, ironically enough, have a web browser open, and I am seeing a countdown to Xbox. And it's showing at just under 25 days, 24 hours, 23 minutes, and 50... No, I'm sorry, 24 days, 23 hours, and 49 minutes. Okay, that's more like it. So, we do not have a much longer, just less than a month. So, I think that's going to be just about enough time for everyone to work themselves up into an absolute frenzy. Okay, maybe just me, I don't know yet. But, regardless, I hopefully this has been a video that has been helpful to you guys. Um... In case you're wondering, I am going to be doing these types of videos for a while. I've kind of jumped in 
Um, I may be going ahead too far in some of my recent tech videos and I haven't really explained some of the tech that actually makes those tech work, if that makes sense. Uh, so, for example, I haven't really talked about memory and, you know, how it works really is an overview, but yet I go into kind of finite details about, say, bandwidth, and that's not very good um, from my perspective. So, I don't really like to lose viewers in terms of they don't understand what I'm talking about. So, I'm going to be making a few correctional videos over the next few weeks, and hopefully you guys will be sticking around. Anyway, I think that's just about it on this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, and I will see you soon. Take care, and bye for now. Oh,